Here we go. All right, mindset. Um, what do I say about mindset? Mindset, guys, here's the thing. It's I can show you the plan. We can say, like, what's the best lead generation? Where should you get your leads from? How many deals do you want to close? All those good things, right, that are all part of the business plan. But if you don't have the right mindset going into the new year, if you're not doing some self-reflecting, if you are not asking yourself some of those tough questions and really identifying, you know, what's working, what's not working, why you should even work hard in 2024, what's the motivation, then none of the other stuff really matters. So I always like to start off my sessions with the mindset around this and kind of get some questions going out there to you know, spark you guys to kind of look inward and reflect so that you can go into the new year with a good mindset and kind of a, a good overall mental state. So a couple of questions, guys, and here's what I recommend. I'm going to ask you some questions right now, and I would love for you guys to share if you are comfortable with sharing and also write some of this stuff down. So first question right here that we got is what is really important in my life that hasn't happened yet? that a really good year in real estate can make happen. So if you just go into 2024 and you crush the business, you hit your goals, you make it happen, you have an awesome 2024, what's something important in your life that maybe hasn't happened, but that can happen as a result of an awesome 2024? What comes to your mind, guys? Who, who would like to maybe share something um, feel free to unmute yourself and, and give me some thoughts behind that. I I have like two thoughts like on that if if you don't mind me sharing. Go for um, it. So okay, so if I have like this killer, awesome, most amazing year for 2024, well then I just feel like it's gonna flow into like years beyond because it's about momentum, and I really really believe in momentum. Um, because like once you have that feeling and you know what that amazing feeling is, it's just that like energizes you yourself. Like it elevates your own like, you know, self thoughts, feelings, everything to be able to like go for more, to be able to help more people and like do more, give more and just like be more for yourself, not for anybody else, not competition for anybody else or against anyone about like your old self and like what you could do, your capacity to be able to like grow and like, you know, just continue to do more. And then um, and then the, the second part of that, and this is more on like a personal level uh, in terms of uh, like something I'd love to be able to do. I'd love to be able to take a little bit of time off and go for a month and walk the um, the um, Frances de Santiago uh, in Spain, France and Spain, because mm -hmm. I really, really want to, uh, I want to walk the Camino. That's awesome. I don't know what the Camino is, but it sounds awesome. I'm going to have to Google that once I'm <laughs> it's, done. Uh, it's 800 kilometers. Yeah, it's an 800 kilometer pilgrim uh, walk. So it's wow. about reflection and um, like kind of just like a spiritual route, like going within, but it's 500 miles. So 800 kilometers, 500 miles. You kind of do it over like a month or however, however you like, however you want. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. So I'm hearing momentum, right? The better you can do in 2024, it would allow you to kind of build that momentum that will trickle into the other years and just kind of propel you forward. And then I'm hearing a personal goal of, traveling to this part of the world and being able to experience this walk that that you would really like to do and that was is meaningful to you right um, those are awesome those are two awesome things so everyone else guys here on in the workshop i want you to think about that and if you have some ideas write them down right now what what can happen right because that's your motivation right there right like what justine just is, just described she should be writing that down. She should be taking a picture of it. She should have that on her screensaver, on her phone, you know, some of these things so that there's a constant reminder of why am I doing this? Why am I putting in the time? Why am I putting in the energy? Why am I making the sacrifices? Because this business is not easy, right? Let's just be, be real about it. But when you have those motivating factors in front of you and you are clear with what they are, like that can fire you up in the morning on the days that you don't want to, you know, get after it. Right. So 
I like that. I like that. Uh, anybody else? Let's get one more. Is there anybody else that would like to share what comes to your mind of what can happen for you if, if you achieve a really good year in real estate? Feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like. Um, if not, we'll move on to the to the next one. I'll uh, I'll go ahead, guys. Uh, go for it. So, when I get that really really good year next year uh, for myself, uh, I definitely want to start doing something that I've been wanting to do is start investing my money back into real estate. Right. Um, I make money off selling real estate, but now I want to put it back into real estate, get passive income. And start building my own portfolio for sure next year. There you go. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. What would that mean to you if you were able to do that? Uh, I mean, it means that I can set the example, right? For my family, um, generations to come, start building my own portfolio. Uh, come from a humble background. So being the first to do it in my family would be really cool. Uh, and just letting them know that I can do it and it can be done is another win for me. So setting okay. the example for sure. And then... I mean, just setting myself up for the future, my future generations, right? I, you know, I take you guys into consideration when I do plan out my future. So I see from you, Jason, Rob, Blanca, everyone. And now I have a better idea of where I'm going to be, you know, very soon. So there you go, man. I get that good year next year. <laughs> yep. It's more than just the deal, right? <laughs> Setting the example for your family, building a portfolio, you know, proving, you know, giving inspiration to others. I mean, those are awesome, awesome things, man. And and to me like that, that's what makes doing all the hard work worth it. You know, when there's something bigger than just selling homes, right? Mm -hmm. Selling homes is great, but what's the bigger thing? So thanks for sharing. Uh, let's move on to the next one, guys. Next question. What's working really well for me in my business? Um, what comes to your mind? Like what's something that like, Hey, this comes easy for me or this part of the business, or this is something I'm really good at. What comes easy for me? Um, and then where have I struggled? And this is your time to be honest with yourself, right? What comes well for you where you don't, you know, it just kind of happens naturally. There's not, you know, a whole lot of effort needed to make that part of it happen. Um, and where have you struggled? If we have to be honest with ourselves. Would anybody like to share I'll take what it. comes to their mind? Go for it, David. Well, for me, just just talking to people in general and networking, I mean, I feel like it's natural for me. I like talking. Yeah. I mean, you and I talk all the time, right? I reach out yep. to you. We're always so that's that's not the problem. I, I'm good with that. And I feel like I'm I'm pretty strong in that area of uh, focus. But where I've struggled, always have struggled, is not having structure. I've been really unstructured throughout the whole phase of real estate for myself, I've, I've just always been everywhere. And I think that's what's really hurt my business over the long run, honestly. There you go. So you you can talk to anybody. I could throw you in a room. I could throw you on a corner. I can throw you in a grocery store and you'll make friends, right? You'll start chopping it up. Yeah, but having not, the structure, right? Yeah. To maybe, maybe do it every single day or have it really mapped out like a plan. Maybe that's somewhere where, where you struggle a little bit. The consistency, I would say, more than anything. The structure. There you go. Definitely. And it's good. It's good that you recognize that, right? Because we know what our strengths and weaknesses are, right? And when we know what our strengths are, we can double down on, on what we're good at, right? If you naturally know how to talk to people, then your lead generation and, and how you get business should revolve around talking to people, right? Yeah. Because it's a path of least resistance. And the other parts where you have struggled, Maybe that's the part where you need accountability or you need a coach or you need a mentor. Or you need someone to kind of help you put the plan in place that's going to push you to, to stay consistent, right? Uh, trust I, me, man. You're not the only one who struggles with that. I agree 100%. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's get some other people. Those of you guys that are on the call, let's get some other uh, volunteers. What comes to your mind? Uh, what works well for you? Where have you struggled? Uh, let's see. I haven't heard from Pamela, Jenny, Dev. Anyone else? I mean, I, I'm going to try to chime in here. Uh, for me, honestly, um, kind of a little bit like David here. I feel like I'm decent with the talking. I feel like I can have a decent group with people when I'm talking to them. But um, 
once again, planning is something that I want to make sure I can address going into 2024 because um, it, it's something that's really important to make sure that over long term um, you have an effective strategy of where you want to go. There you go, right? So both of you guys kind of had the same answer, which is which is a common thing, right? For for people in our business, even for myself, um, and I, and so some of the advice I can give you right there is put yourselves in situations that will force you to stay accountable. And I'll give you an example of, of myself, right? Because I struggle with, with structure sometimes too. And I did early on and, and it's gotten better over time. But just by me, like having a team of agents and me agreeing to host our Tuesday meeting and our Thursday training, like I put that in my calendar and I know people are counting on me. So there's no way I can miss that, right? So I put myself in situations where other people are counting on me and I won't let other people down. Maybe I'll let myself down, right? But it's hard for me to let other people down when I know people are gonna be there. Even like today, right? When I was thinking about doing this, I said, hey, I was kind of going back and forth. It's last minute, are people gonna show up, anything like that? And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna create the thing and I'm gonna put it out there. And now I'm accountable. Because now if I just get one person that says I'm gonna show up to the workshop, I have to do the workshop now, right? So. If you do something like that in your business, maybe you do that with your your lead gen or your training or when you're going to show up to the office and you put, kind of create those situations, then it's not just on you. There's other people involved. And trust me, that will force you to stay accountable. And little by little, you will start to become that person that is more structured, right? So that's mm -hmm. a little hack right there that I can give you guys. That's pretty um, good. <clears throat> so Enrique, can I share? Yeah. Really quick, I, I, you know, I, I really uh, connected with the first person that uh, shared with the mm -hmm. last. Um, I connect with people really, really well, strangers, like wherever I'm at. And it's just amazing how people are so attracted to me. And I always question myself, why am I not capitalizing on this, right? Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's it, because I have been struggling in my business. I, you know, when I am in contract, uh, you know, what works really well, well for me is that I'm really organized, diligent, and just on top of things once I have, you know, a real transaction going And but my biggest struggle, I believe it's my mindset, my focus and lead generation, lead generation and accountability it comes down to everything you're saying and so i think structure encompasses everything right with your mindset with everything so that's my struggle it has got it got it yeah yeah and you see like three different people said the same answer right you know so the the thing is you're not alone right it's we're humans right it's it's a common thing if you're a naturally gifted salesperson that means you're probably naturally outgoing you like to talk and the opposite is like being really structured a lot of times right so it, don't worry like this is this is why you're here but once again you got to set up those things in place coaches work really well accountability groups work really well um putting yourself out there to the public you know works really well some of you guys that follow me on social media, uh, you guys see me post when I do my workouts and I put a little number on it. That's because I've created like public accountability for myself. I do say, I say I'm going to work out 60 workouts, right? And my, my goal is to get one workout in a day and do 60 of them at a time. So every time I work out, I put number one out of 60, number two out of 60, number three out of 60. And I put that out in public and it's, no one probably really knows why I do it, but it's really for me to just say, hey, guys, I'm putting myself out there. So like it's my little thing, my little kind of hack that I've created for myself that keeps me accountable. Right. And then little by little, I get people like hitting me up. Hey, what is that thing you're doing? Why do you always post those numbers? And then I get people to join on with me. And then now it's more reason for me to stay accountable and lead by example. Right. So that's just some ways that you can tackle that. Make it a game. Right. Gamify it for yourself. Let's move forward, guys. We've got a lot of stuff to go through. Um, what are some of the bad habits I must shed for a strong 2024? I want you guys to write this down. What are some of the bad habits? And then what are some of the good habits that I must create for a strong 2024? You know, and just as, just as you just being real and honest with yourself. What do I got to let go of? And what do I got to bring on, right? 
what comes to your mind? And then, of course, we could say sit here and write down a million things about ourselves. But what are maybe the one or two things that come to your mind immediately, right? And if anybody would like to share, uh, I go would ahead say, and speak up. Hi, it's Christina. I'd say yeah, procrastination. That's a big thing for me. So I think if uh, I set a good plan and and actually follow it and not pro procrastinate, it'll definitely be a better year. So procrastination, right? Sense of urgency, procrastination is you got to get get rid of that. Um, and they kind of go hand in hand, right? Get rid of the procrastination and then set a good plan that you're going to follow. It's kind of the, the habit that you got to maybe follow through with the plan that you set out, right? And I think that this kind of ties into the previous one, right? Where we, where some people talked about just staying accountable and, and staying on top of things. You see how these are all kind of related, right? But these are fundamental to us being, you know, strong business people is consistency is the, the biggest factor, right? Anybody can have a good month, right? Anybody can have a good quarter. Not many people can have a good year, year over year, over year, over year for five years, 10 years, 15 years, right? And so it all boils down to well, what are the consistent things that I must do every single day? And we'll go over that right now in a, in a second. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's move forward, guys, and take the notes on for yourself. Um, so here's a big one. Raise your hand if you've ever struggled with not feeling motivated or you feel off track. I know I have, definitely, right? So the reason I ask this question is when I'm off track or not feeling motivated, what can I do to get back on track? Because guess what? You're going to write a plan down and you're going to go into the new year all gung-ho. Everyone does, right? We all, new year, new me, new resolutions, all this stuff. And then... A month later, you get a cold, you get sick, right? And you're out for three or four days. And then all of a sudden, everything goes out the window, right? And it's kind of a domino effect or something happens in your life. Life happens, right? You run into an issue, a problem. You got a, a deal that's, you know, making you upset. You have personal stuff going on. And then all of a sudden, this great plan that you came into the, you know, into the year with kind of gets forgotten about. So if we already know that life is going to happen, right? Life is always going to happen. What is something you can do to stay on track? Is there a process? Is there a system? Is there a series of steps that you must take that will remind you of what you're supposed to do or that will get you back on track or that gets you motivated again? What are some ideas that you guys have? Let's get some, some feedback from you. What's some ideas to get you back on track? Go for it, Maori. Uh, it's funny that you talk about this, Keeks. Um, so this happened to me today, right? Uh, I I hate getting sick. I, I hate getting sick, but I did get sick. Uh, I think it was during Thanksgiving Day. I started feeling kind of down. Um, but that kind of threw me into, a, all right, you're not going into work anymore. And then I got lazy. And I started feeling better. And I started getting comfortable. Um but what has been working for me is, I mean, I don't really need a whole lot. I just need someone or something to tell me, you know, get back into it. So uh, I did it this morning. I've been doing it the last couple of days, which has thrown me back into the work mode, even though I'm kind of sick, is I'll just go on YouTube and I'll find like uh, Andy Frisella or just any motivational, you know, quick pump up like a five to nine minute video um and then it really kind of wakes me up gets me going and then it reminds me like you're still a killer man keep going right uh it's not easy for me and that's what works for me right i don't gotta yell in the mirror or anything like that but i do gotta hear something or someone saying hey you still got this you're feeling down but you know you gotta keep going um just motivational stuff in the morning and as soon as i kick that off i'm ready to go doesn't matter if i'm sick or i'm feeling tired or unmotivated i'm just go mode so that, that's what works for me. That's awesome, man. I love that you said that because that's something that I do as well that works for me. <laughs> I have I have a couple of go-to YouTube videos that I watch from different, you know, speakers that I that I enjoy. Or you listen to that good one and you're like, man, that one just like made me feel something I inside. Know. I'm I'm <laughs> saving that one. I'm I'm uh, saving that one in my back pocket. And anytime I feel like crap, I'm watching that video, right? 
Yeah. Um, or maybe you have someone that you can go to. Maybe it's not a video. Maybe there's a person, right? Maybe it's a person that you call them and you know that they're going to speak into you. Maybe it's going to church. I don't know. Everyone's different, right? Maybe it's going for a, a, a walk, a run. Maybe it's journaling. There's so many things you can do, but you got to figure out what works for you because I promise you life is going to happen. Yeah. And it always happens when you're on a roll. Everything was going good, and then this <laughs> happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> the story the of your life, right? And then this happened, and then everything. But remember, it's all how we look at it, right? Like, if, if that's the way you frame it in your mind, that all it takes is for one thing to happen, to throw your whole business off, then who's in control? Is it you, or is it the things that happen outside of your life? And what I've learned is that I'm in control, right? I'm in control, and it's up to me on how I view things, how I – see things it's up to me to do the certain things that i gotta do to get me into that mindset to go after it and get back on track let's get one more guys what's something that you think you can do what's something that speaks to you as we're talking about this that helps get you on track i have i have i have one uh, or a few actually um it's a it's a visualization, like visualize like where you are, like what that, like what you want to have in your mind and like um, the goals that you have. So just like visualize whether it's a, you know, just a mental vision or like, it's just like a true, like, you know, vision board or something like that, that you want to do. Um, it's just that reminder of like why you're doing this and then, you know, make, make your, make your list of like the things that you have to do. And, um, and, and, for me, I have to do the hardest thing first, like do the hardest thing first, because you want to get that over with. So then you can do things that, you know, just feel a little bit more comfortable. And, um, and then I also want to like make a comment on something else that was said. Um, we can be really good at something, but not like it. Like I can connect really, really well with people and I can communicate, but I'm not an extrovert. I'm a total introvert. So I have to work really hard at doing it but I can be really, really good at it. So it's doing the stuff that's hard. And so visualizing yourself doing that and then doing those hard things, that kind of pushes me. I love that. I love that, Justine. You can be good at something, but that doesn't mean you have to like it, right? Or mm -hmm. you can find the pieces of it that you do like, or you can do it in a way that is going to make it more tolerable for you. But you're absolutely right. There's certain things that I do that I, I'm naturally guys an introvert. As some of you guys that maybe have know me personally, like I'm really chill. When I'm at home, I'm like super chill. But when I'm at work or when I got to be in front of people or when I got to go into an appointment, I know how to turn it on. And that's something that I've learned over time. But catch me on a Sunday, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, listening to music, stuff like that. Um, and sometimes the quiet time is, is, is what I need. But I love what you guys shared, what you guys have contributed. Write that down for yourself, whatever it is, what gets you back on track and make sure you have that somewhere where you're, when you're feeling that way, you can go straight to it and say, Hey, remember when we had this workshop, I'm feeling this way. This is what I wrote down that I need to do to get me back in that mindset. Okay. Uh, what skills do I need to master in order to have an amazing 2024? What comes to the top of your mind? One or two, maybe business skills that you need to really work on or master uh, and this i want this to be more related to your business maybe like hey i gotta get my listing presentation down like i know i know it a little bit but i'm not that great at it or my scripts are not that good or i don't understand the financials of the business what's one or two skills that come to your mind that you need to master and you've been putting it off maybe or maybe it's not the funnest thing you like to do but you know it's crucial. Let's get a, a share. Anybody want to share? Feel free to just unmute yourself. And uh, if you got something that comes to your mind, throw it out there so we can get some ideas as well. Um, if any, if anyone doesn't want to go, I'll go ahead. Um, I would say like really getting good at asking the harder questions. Um, it, it, sometimes in business, when you, when you have a client and, um, you know, you have to ask the hard questions, 
sometimes you have to make sure you really push through it. And that's something I feel like I really need to make sure that I master in order to have a successful 2024. Got it. So being able to be a little, maybe a little bit more assertive, maybe ask some of those harder or deeper questions that's yeah. going to move the needle forward. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's crucial. That's definitely crucial to, to helping the client maybe see what you want them to see or understand their needs and build rapport. What's one more guys, someone else, give me an example. What's a, a skill that you need to master in 2024? The listing presentation. Yeah. Listing presentation. Yeah. I'm, I, don't, I don't think I've ever really been good at that myself. I've always been on the other side of being a buyer's agent. So I think listing presentation. For me. There you go. So that's a really, really powerful use of your time, right? Um, is learning the listing presentation, mastering it, watching videos on it, reaching out. Like if you reach out to me, bro, I have a, I have a template that I can share with you. Um, you know, but Hey, if you want to take listings, you got to be really good at the listing presentation. Right. So that's a really, really high, uh, really, really good use of your time. Right. Absolutely. Enrique, one more. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that when, you know, if, if the goal for me is listings of course you know that's like but i, I want to be a listing agent right mm -hmm. um, and i think that being able to deliver uh what you're worth is so important and it almost has to be like a a two-minute elevator speech of why my clients enjoy working with me so once you figure out what you're good at and why your clients enjoy working for you and you're sitting across the table you're like this is why my clients love working with me and just I love that. that. Yeah, I think I want to master it good. I um, love that. I love that. Yeah. So just one 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 Latino tip that I that I um, just embraced was that I'm trilingual. I speak English. I speak Spanish, and the language of real estate. So that's <laughs> I <huge>. like that. <laughs> that's huge. That was like my. Um, but I have fun with that. I like and that. I love that. And I don't that. do enough. So that's the goal is to you know, be in front of more sellers and, and really master um, delivering my value proposition. There we go. I love that. Um, I did a video and a training on value proposition. There's, it's on my YouTube channel. I'll send that to you after, or if you reach out to me and I break down step-by-step step on how to come up with a value proposition statement. Um, but that's a really, really good thing. And then that's higher level, right? A lot of agents don't understand that in the beginning yes. as you as you get more seasoned, you understand like, hey, if I meet someone in the elevator, I meet someone at an open house, I need to be able to quickly tell them a powerful statement on why clients choose me, right? Yes, that's that's huge. So huge, that's right? I yeah. <clears throat> I like that. That's great. That's a great use of your time. Okay, let's move on, guys. We got still a lot more stuff to go over. Okay, so hopefully I got your mindset going. Hopefully some of these questions have triggered you to reflect. Hopefully you wrote some stuff down and you, you kind of have some focus areas, right? And the, there you go. Notes. I love that. The key <laughs> is that you have some direction. So when we go into 2024 and you're like, well, what training should I attend? Well, it should be trainings on things that you wrote down, right? It should be, you know, what stuff should I research on YouTube? What questions should I be asking some of my mentors or people that I want to learn from? It's those focus areas right there. And it's easy to get distracted and, you know, chase shiny objects, you know, and stuff like that. But remember, like, pick a couple things that you got to work on and work on those for three months, six months until you really, really get good at those before you start introducing other things to your business. Um, that's really, really helpful. And you'll see a lot of progress that way if you just focus. Um, so the next part, guys, the numbers, it's all about the numbers, right? Why do we do this? And what you will realize is I'm going to go over how to break down your numbers in a super easy way. There's a bunch of ways to do this, but the way I'm going to show you is probably an easy way that I think. Um, and it's just really how much money do you want to make and how many deals do I need to close to make that amount of money, right? Because it's one thing to say like, hey, I want to make a million dollars this year. But if you don't know what that means in terms of how many units, average price point, then you will, you will go after different things that don't put you in alignment with your goal, right? But when you're clear on what your goal is and what sort of business you should be chasing, then you can get more clear on who to say yes to and who to say no to, maybe what things to refer out to another agent if that's not in alignment with your goal. So you got to get really clear on what your numbers are. So 
let's move forward on this. So I need you to write three numbers down right now. Number one is what is your income goal? How much would you like to take home in 2024? So just write that down. You want to make a quarter million bucks, write $250,000 what I want to make, right? Whatever your number is, everyone's number is different. The next goal, the next number I want you to write down is what is your commission split, right? With your broker. You know, are you on a 50-50? Are you on a 70-30? Are you on an 80-20? Are you on a 100% brokerage? Whatever it might be. Everyone splits different. Um, but what's your average split, right? Roughly. And then the next thing is, what is your average sales price? So those of you guys that have closed business already, you should probably know more or less what your average sales price is if you've done some deals already. If you don't know what your average sales price is, you can maybe um, look at like the area that I do business in where I live, what's roughly like the median price. Don't go best, best case scenario. Don't go lowest scenario. Give like a middle number where, okay, like this is, you know, give or take, this is more or less, you know, the, the, the deals that are out there, right? Unless you specifically focus on like luxury or whatever, then you know, it'd be different. But for the most, for most people, they have kind of a median, median price. Um, if you're in like the San Jose Bay area, it's probably around a million plus or minus, you know, I would say that's a conservative number, you know, um, to go off of. We'd always, we all, we never want to go off best case scenario because then our numbers are going to, they're not going to, things happen, right? You'll have your fluctuations. So your three numbers, your income that you want to make, your, your split, Roughly, what's your split? And then your average sales price. Okay, so now what we're going to do is how many transactions do you need to close to hit your income goal? And this is a really easy formula right here. So you take your, I want everyone to get their calculator out. If you have on your phone or even if you can, if you want to just write this down. Um, but I'm going to show you guys here. So if I want to close, if I want to make $250,000, you I'm going to put that in my, in my calculator first. Okay. So whatever your number is, put that in your calculator. Now I'm going to divide that number by my commission split. So let's say I'm at a 70% commission split. I'm just going to use that. So I'll do 250,000 divided by 70, and then I'll hit percent, the percent sign, which is basically 0.7. Okay, and then I'll hit equals. And that's gonna give me basically the gross commission income that I would have to bring in. So just leave that number on there. And now I'm gonna divide it by my average sales price, whatever that third number is that you had. So I'm gonna go divided by, if my average sales price is a million, I'm gonna write a million. One, zero, 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 zero. zero. Equals. Let me make sure that worked out. 250,000 divided by 70%. Oh, I forgot one step in the process, guys. <laughs> you got to divide it by your average commission. So let me do that one more time. So let me correct this real quick. So... Start with your number, 250,000 divided by your split, 70%, okay? Divided by average commission, right? It depends on your area, but I would say two and a half to 3%. I mean, we're technically not allowed to say what the averages are, right? But you know what your average is on what you get on your deals, right? Or what you see out there. For us, we see a lot of like two and a half percent. So I would divide it one more time by two and a half percent. And then you'll, and then now you'll divide it by your average sales price. So divided by 1 million, if that's my average sales price. And then that's going to give me a number of units. So let me do that one more time. And then if you guys are getting stuck, please uh, unmute yourself and let me know. So 
I'll take my income goal. This time I'm going to do a hundred thousand. If I want to make a hundred thousand bucks, I'm going to write a hundred thousand. I'm going to divide it by my broker split. So if I'm at a 70%, I'm going to divide it by 70%. Now I'm going to divide that number by my average commission. I'm going to say two and a half percent on mine. And then I'm going to divide that by my average sales price. So if my average sales price is a hundred thousand, uh, I'm sorry, a million bucks, I'm going to divide it by a million. And now what that's going to do is that's going to give you the number of units that I need to sell at that average price. So in this case, it gave me 5.7. And what I recommend, guys, is you now round that number up, right? Because you want to account for deals that fall through, right? Don't go on the lower end, round it up to the higher end. You might have deals that fall through. You might have um, deals that roll over into the next year. So once you have your number, round it up maybe by one, two, or three more just to be safe, have a cushion there. So really quick, let's go around the room. What was your number? What was the number that you came up with? How many units do you have to close to hit your income goal? For me, it's 12. 12. There you go. 12 deals. Anybody else? Anybody else have their number? For me, it's tell me 14. 14. There you go. We'll see. We'll see. Yep. Mine was 11. 11. Awesome. 11.5. <laughs> there you go. Round it up, right? I would round it up to 12 or 13. 28. 28. Let's go. 28. Big goals over here. I would say 10 for me. 10. Excellent. Right. So now you guys got your, your number, right? So that number is the number that you need to own, right? If it's 10, that's the number that I'm focused on. Right. And then, so the next step in the process is to break that number up into quarters and months, right? I told you guys round up round it up to account for any fallout or rollover and then break it up, break it down, divide it by 12. That'll tell you how many deals per month, you know, and you could even divide it by four to see how many deals per quarter. And so the whole point of this exercise is to know what's my monthly goal, what's my quarterly goal and what's my yearly goal. Right. And to really break it down into the smaller of numbers, because staying, I got to close 12 deals in a whole year. You're having to look forward a whole year. But when you break that down to, OK, if I want to close 12 deals a year, that means I got to close one deal a month. It's a lot easier to focus on one deal a month than it is to focus on 12. Right. And if I say, hey, you know, one deal a month, that's three deals every quarter. Then I know like, okay, in this next quarter, I got to get to three deals, you know, and I'm going to get there by doing one deal a month. And then you can check your progress along the way and you can see if you're on track instead of saying, well, I got to close 28 deals in the, in the whole year. That sounds like a big, scary number, right? So you want to break it down into like 90 day, you know, targets and monthly targets. Okay, any questions on this part? Because this is sometimes where I lose people on the numbers. If you have any questions, just unmute yourself, throw them out there. Okay. Next step in the process, guys, we're moving on to lead generation. Right. A lot of you guys, uh, when I asked you, what are some of the things you want to work on? You talked about lead generation. So here's the thing with lead generation. Um, and what I want you to think is I want you to take yourself out of thinking like a realtor and just think like a business person right now. Right. Pretend you're not in real estate at all. Just pretend you're just a business person. Right. 
that needs to go out there and get leads, right? For whatever product or service you're trying to offer. When you think of it that way, guys, there's really only four ways to generate leads. It's reaching out to people you know. It's reaching out to people you don't know, right? Strangers. It's buying leads or paying for some sort of advertisement, something where you're paying money to get leads to come in. Whether you're running ads, whether you're paying a company, it doesn't really matter. You're paying in some sort of way. And then the last way, which is now the, the popular way that's big, is you're creating content out there on social media and stuff like that so that people can reach out to you. The same way that I posted a lot of this on social media, that I'm having this workshop, and some of you guys reached out to me, and then you guys signed up, and then you guys are here today, right? So I want you to wrap your head around that because a lot of times we we – we start thinking like a realtor and we start putting our opinions and our bias and all that stuff. But really every single business out there generates leads by one of these four ways or a combination of all four, or they do all four in some way or another. You reach out to people, you know, you reach out to people you don't know, you run ads or you pay for leads some way or another, or you can create content out there on social media and you get people to come to you uh, based off the information that you provide. Right. Okay, so now um, we're gonna go into some lead gen examples and how to set this up. So here's some fundamentals, guys, with your lead generation. Is a strong business will have at least three to four pillars of business, three to four ways that you bring business in. And this is where I, I see a lot of agents fail is sometimes they only have one. Sometimes they say, well, I only work off referrals. Referrals, if I go back to that first way, referrals is just working with people you already know. You guys follow me? But there's three other ways to go out and get business that you're not even tapping into. And what I know about referrals is that referrals, there's no way to predict how many referrals you're going to get. It's hard to predict how many referrals you're going to get because it's it's based off the size of your database. It's based off what's happening in the market. Are people buying right now? Are people selling right now? Um, so it does work. And I absolutely love referrals. But what I'm saying is you need to have three to four different ways you get business so that you always have business coming in and you're not just putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, and think of think about it this way. If your business, if you're trying to build, the analogy I make is like having like a table a strong foundation. If your table only has one leg, it's going to be a wobbly table, right? If your table has two legs, okay, that might be able to work. But if your table has three or four legs, that thing is sturdy and it's not going nowhere. If it has four legs, even if you chop one off, you still got three other ones that are working, right? And what we witnessed during the different time periods in the last few years for example, there was people that mainly relied only on open houses, and that was like their main source of business. And then what happened during COVID? Who remembers COVID? You couldn't do open houses. You had to fill out the PED forms. You couldn't, you had to do social distancing. So all these agents who only did business off open houses, their business basically just fell off. Their, their one leg got chopped from underneath them because they didn't have anything else going for them, right? Um, what happens when the market changes, right? Like, and things go up, rates go up, right? Or for example, there's loan officers and all they were focusing on was refinances and they weren't doing any purchase business and they were only focusing on refinances. And it was great when the rates were low, like they were closing a ton of refinances and then the rate shot up and then now there's no more refinance business, right? Or it dropped dramatically, right? So once again, they need to have multiple ways that they're getting business out there. Um, or if your business was just mainly relying on referrals and now the market is down and you're not getting as many referrals as you were getting before, your business is crippled once again, right? So I want you guys to write down, what are your current pillars of business, right? Those of you guys that are already in business that have closed deals, where is your business coming from? What are your, and think about them in this way. Are you reaching out to people you know? These are more like referrals, friends and family, people you know. Are you reaching out to people you don't know? 
Are you cold calling? Are you door knocking? Things like that where you're out there, open houses where you're out there basically meeting strangers. Are you running any sort of advertisements or are you buying any leads or you're running ads or farming or anything where you're paying money to try to get people to come in? And lastly, are any of you guys creating content on social media to get people to reach out to you through the social media channels, right? So write down what your pillars are. Okay. Any questions on this? I'm gonna just stop real quick. If you have any questions on this so far, feel free to unmute yourself. Let me know. Am I making sense, guys? You guys follow me where I'm where I'm going with the lead gen, right? And so when you think about lead generation, think about it as a business owner. Don't just think about it as a realtor, because a lot of times the realtor mind comes on, well, I don't like paying for leads, or I only work with people I know, or I don't want to do an open house. But if you don't understand the fundamentals of how leads work you're missing out on these opportunities. And that's why some people's businesses are down because they don't have different things in motion that are feeding them constant business, right? So here's a, here's a plan. This is not the only plan you can follow, but this is a plan that I think is great because it encompasses all four of those ways that we talked about. It, it encompasses reaching out to people you know. It encompasses reaching out to people you don't know. It encompasses paid ad, paid leads, right? And then it also encompasses social media or creating content to get people to reach out to you. And so when you have a business that's built like this and you're, you're working on all three of these kind of pillars, you're going to have opportunity coming in all the time because you're working all of them, right? And you can build your schedule out to where you work all of these pillars. So the first one is your SOI business, right? Your soul, your sphere of influence, your friends and family. This is basically people that you know, right? And what I think is, is great is you have 40 to 50%. The goal should be 40 to 50% of your business comes from warm leads, right? People that you know, people that you've helped in the past, referrals, things of that sort. It does take some time to build up to this because in the beginning, like I say, if you don't have a big database, it's going to take some time to build your database, right? Um, so some of you guys might rely on the other sources if you're newer, but if you've been in the business for a long time and you've closed a lot of deals, then you should be putting a lot of emphasis into your database of people that already know, like, and trust you and your friends and family. So 40 to 50% of your deals should come from here. And how do you attack those? You want to call your database four times a year, right? Call them. If you, if you help someone buy a home, reach out to them at least four times throughout the year. It could be a call to just check in on them. It could be, hey, do you need anything? It could be a market update. Um, we host events on our team. So we host a couple events throughout the year. So calling people to invite them to something is a really good way of not just sounding like a salesperson and actually giving value to them. Hey, I'm having this event. You know, would love for you and your family to come out. Whether they come out or not, is not the point. The whole point is that it's an opportunity for you to reach out to them. So the magic number is reach out to them four times per year, once per quarter, invite them to an event or just do a simple check-in, a genuine check-in. You know, hey, I noticed on Facebook, you just had a baby. I want to call you and just congratulate you. How's things coming along? All right? Something yeah. like that. Post on social media three to five times per week. I'm not going to go into what to post, guys, but just put yourself out there, right? Show people what you're doing. That's it. It's 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 really that simple. And, you know, get creative, have fun with it, make it your own. Show people while you're out touring home. Show people while you're in the office. Show people what you're doing in your personal life. Just make yourself known and, and give some sort of value out there. And then the last part to tackle this uh, this pillar right here is send out some items of value every month. So that can be a market update. You know, there's plenty of platforms you can use out there. Uh, that can be whatever it is. You send out an email every month to your, your database. Send them something on a monthly basis that can be automated. That doesn't require you to do a bunch of the heavy lifting. There's plenty of tools out there. And if, if you want to reach out to me, I can show you what those tools are. The next one here, guys, is online leads or paid ads, right? 20 to 30% of your business should come from that. Those of you guys that have money to invest, there's Zillow, there's realtor.com. 
And there's also a lot of companies now that will give you leads where you don't have to pay anything up front. You just give them a referral fee at the end, right? So if you have money to pay for leads, it's probably going to be cheaper if you buy them up front because it's less than the referral fee. But if you don't have money to buy them up front, sign up for one of these platforms like OpCity or Ojo or one of these that you get leads and then you just give them a referral fee at the end. Um, you could even do farming. Those of you guys that want to farm in a certain neighborhood, but that costs money as well, right? So this is where you're paying for some sort of advertisement. You're paying for flyers. You're doing things like that um, or run paid ads, right? Some of you guys want to get into Facebook ads, Instagram ads. There's different ways to get people to come to you. But online leads or paid ads, to me, I like online leads because it's easy. It's literally, you know, we work with Zillow. We have a Zillow Flex account. They send me leads every month. We close a deal. I give them a referral fee. And for people that object to like, well, I don't want to work with Zillow. Think about it this way. If another agent from outside of the area called you and said, hey, David, I got a referral for you. I have a client that wants to buy. I'm from Texas. I have a client looking to buy in your neighborhood. Can I refer this client to you? And how much referral fee would you pay me? David, unmute yourself. It's the same thing. It's 20%, 30%, yeah. right? 20%, 30%, whatever it yeah. is, right? Yeah, same it's thing. The same, it's the same thing, right? So if you get a lead from an online company and they want a referral fee, it's just like an agent referring you a deal, which all of us would take those deals all day and we would gladly pay a referral fee. But for some reason, when we talk about like these online companies or like, no, I'm not paying that guy, right? There's there's a lot of people that say it like, I don't want to pay Zillow or whatever, but you would pay either way, right? And, and that's why not all of your business is coming from there, but 20 to 30%, because after you close this deal that you paid a referral fee, that lead now becomes part of your database. And now you get referrals from them. And now you get the other business that comes off of it. Okay, so I'm off my soapbox about uh, online leads, but um, open houses are a great way to go out there and get deals. 20 to 30% of your business coming from open houses, that's a great way to go out there. You don't have to pay for open houses, but you got to put your time and energy and effort into the open house, right? I would try to do two to four open houses a month. Um, if you don't have open houses available to you, then that means you're going to have to spend some time calling agents and trying to get into their open houses, right? That's just part of the plan to get those opportunities. I would door knock all the neighbors. So if I'm going to work an open house, I'm going to make it worth my while. I'm not just going to go to the open house and wait for people to come to me. I'm actually going to use that opportunity to door knock the immediate homes around that open house and introduce myself and see if there's anything I can do for them or tell them, hey, I'm hosting this open house, come check it out. I would offer some sort of item of value, whether that's a market update, whether that's free snacks at the open house, whether that's a, a list of homes that are discounted. There's a million ways that you can offer an item of value. You just gotta think of something, what would be valuable to someone coming to my open house? And I would capture these leads and I would follow up with them and start building some contacts from there. So the point I'm trying to make guys with lead gen is this right here. You can screenshot this and I can send you these slides when we're done if you want them. This is a strategy right here. This is a well thought out strategy where it hits all the different ways that you can get leads. And some of them require more work. Some of them require more nurture. Some of them, you just set it and let the leads come in if they're like online leads. But it gives you a well-balanced approach, in my opinion, so that you can always have business and opportunity coming towards you. Any questions, guys, on, on how we came up with this? Okay, I'm going to run through some of this because I know we're approaching the one-hour mark now. Um, the schedule guys to hit this and make this happen the most effective way you got to build the schedule. And so I'm going to give you guys some direction on your schedule. So when you come up with the schedule that you're going to follow, a lot of you guys in the beginning said that structure and consistency and all those things were, were the issue, uh, or a roadblock for you. This is going to help solve that. And I want you to just think about your schedule in a different way. So I want you to think AM and PM. The AM 
is all about lead generation. It's all about, so AM is from whenever you wake up all the way till 12 o'clock. That time should be lead generation mode, right? The PM should be all about 12 and on, should be all about servicing clients, servicing your business, working on all the other things that you need to work on, right? One of my coaches taught me this. He goes, just think AM, PM, AM, you're in this mode, PM, you're in this mode, right? That's the easiest way to create predictability and consistency. That's the easiest way to get into a routine. And when you're in a routine, right, we're creatures of habits. Humans are creatures of habits. When you're in a routine that is the same every single day, it's a lot easier to follow because you you know where you have to be, when you have to be there. You're not kind of guessing and just winging everything, right? And, and that's where you run into mistakes if you're trying to wing it. It also allows you to take control of your business and take control of your time. Because if you know, hey, I got to be here at this time, you know, like, hey, that time is untouchable, right? This is my lead gen time. But in my PM, I have open slots where I can be here, or I can be there. And it allows you to create predictability around your time, your schedule. It allows you to incorporate um, your family life, your personal life, other things that you have to get done when you work kind of in these modes of AM, PM. And the last thing here with your schedule is you need to decide already up front when you're on and when you're off. Right. And that looks different for everybody. If you know Wednesdays at five o'clock, you go take your kids to soccer practice, then that needs to be already in your schedule already. If you know you go to the gym on a certain whatever, that should be somehow worked in here. Right. Or if you know you got this other obligation, that should be somehow worked in um, and try to use these rules. To me, these rules, if you follow them, then you create the schedule that works for you. Feel free to ask any questions at any time, guys. Now, this is a sample schedule right here. Feel free to screenshot this. And obviously, this is just a framework, but your job is going to be to build this out the way it works for you. This is using the AM, PM method. So if you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's pretty much the same. In the mornings, AM, I'm doing lead generation and follow up. And I'm doing two to three hours of that right? Some days you may put in more, some days you may put in less, but I know that in the AM, my goal is to lead generate, whether I'm following up with my leads, whether I'm calling my open house leads, whether I'm reaching out to my database, it doesn't matter, right? You're calling people and you're out there trying to make something happen and book an opportunity. I'm doing that Monday through Friday in the AM. In the PM is when I put in my admin work. That's like emails, you know, working on like stuff, files, all that stuff. That's where I'm adding in training, right? If I need to do some training or watch a YouTube video or whatever, I'm not doing that in the morning. I'm doing that in the afternoon. Then I'm booking a time for that. And then in the afternoon, I'm giving myself two to three appointment slots, right? Uh, so what I, what I did that really worked well for me is I said, hey, um, 2 p.m., 4 p.m. and 6 p.m., those are my three appointment slots, Monday through Friday. So if I have a client that wants to meet with me, my job is to fit them into 2 p.m., 4 p.m., or 6 p.m. Those are the only times I meet with people. Maybe there might have been an exception case by case, but I wouldn't meet with the client in the morning because that's my lead gen time, and that would throw my schedule off, right? I would set it up in this way where it's predictable and I'm in control of how it works. You know, And it's just a matter of training yourself to work in this mode and then training your clients on how you operate your business as well. All right. Um, any questions on this guys, on this legion stuff? Um, I'm sorry, on the schedule right here. Yeah. Um, so Enrique, like mm -hmm. I'm very diligent with my office meeting and broker tour on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are usually very distracted for me. And I know that, I know the answer to it would be to whatever you have to erase, you replace, right? So do Absolutely. you have that or do you just focus on this like a hundred percent? You don't, you don't have meetings in a uh, I honestly, like the way we do it here at our office, nine to 12, we're, we're prospecting. We do our trainings from 12 to one. And then from one and on our, our agents go out and they, they handle their files, they go on appointments, they do other one-on-ones that they gotta do. 
I've, I've tried to teach the whole entire team, you know, of 30 agents, how to follow this schedule. And it just creates predictability. You know, one of my top agents on our team, you know, he's closing 30 plus transactions. He's only been in the business for a few years. This is what he does, right? Like in the morning, he's here, like no ifs, ands, or buts. He's making his calls. He's following up. He's setting up his afternoon. He's reaching out to those clients, those people that told him to call him back. He doesn't go to broker tours, you know. Um, now, if that's a big staple in your business, that's what you got to ask yourself. Is me going to a broker tour really moving my business forward? Or is it just something that is just I'm used to doing? And that's a question that you got to ask yourself, you know. But um, I personally never went to broker tours. I mean, I think there's a time and place for that. But I think once you already know the market, you already know what's out there. It's kind of a personal thing. So that, that I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, but I would say if it's not consistent in your schedule, it's not going to happen. That's just the bottom line, right? Yeah, no, no. I'm open to your advice, seriously, because if, you know, if what I've been doing over and over again is not working for me, then, then, then I need to tweak things around. But I can tell you that from always being, you know, like a, a broker tour and just showing up every time. I got a, a referral uh, for a buyer in Los Gatos uh, and I closed them in a week. It was 2.7 million. So it was great. But it, it, I feel like it was a result of me always being present on Broker Tour, you know, that this agent feel so, felt so comfortable to giving me that lead. But that's just, you know, one that in all the years that I've been in business. So, so, then, so then what you have to ask yourself, right, when we went back to lead generation, uh -huh. Is the broker tour hitting one of those fundamentals of lead generation? Is that reaching out to people I know, people I don't know? Is it a paid advertisement? Is the content right? Those those different ways. Hey, hey, hey. Now, if you're going, if you're going to an event every morning with the intention of generating leads, and that's part of your lead gen, then that could be different. But the way you describe is you got one deal out of all these years. I don't. I wouldn't consider that a lead generation pillar. No, just imagine no, no. it. Yeah. I don't consider it. Yeah. And I, I think you kind of answered your own question. Right. And, you know, if you want something to change and you got to change the way you're approaching it is, yes. is, is what I would encourage you to do. No, I appreciate it. I really do. And I remember, mean, this is um this isn't the end all be all, but it's giving you the framework of how to look at your day. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, you may have to substitute some stuff here and there because that's what works for you. And that's yeah. perfectly fine. Um. Some people may out of may have to turn this around backwards because they have kids and they got you know stuff like that. Like, yeah. but you figure out what works, but you got to lead generate often, daily, and often. Yes. And you got to set time for your trainings and your admin work, and you have to set times to meet with clients and service clients, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's really what our business is about. Yes. Um, Saturday and Sunday, I would say in the a.m. Um, if you don't have any appointments then use that time to maybe follow up, do some lead generation, catch up on things. Um, in the PM, if you have open houses, work your open houses. If you have showings or client appointments, work your appointments. Now, remember, you also got to in here, you're going to insert what days you're off. Maybe you don't work on Sunday afternoons and that's a because you have a family and you guys do family dinner and that's a, a non-negotiable. Well, then you're going to have to put that in there, right? So you can kind of tailor this and insert some of those things that are non-negotiables for you as well. Maori, talk to me. Hey guys, I just wanted to put a little bit of input in this. Um, so I have been following this regimen religiously every week. I, that's kind of how I work out my days. Um, and to me, it's very important because every now and then, more often than not, I'll, I'll find myself closing a lead and I'll go back and say, where did I get this one from? Almost every time it lands on lead generation and follow-up, right? Um, so we, we do have a pond that we pick through, uh, just a bunch of leads that we got to call, you know, full call, things like that. But a lot of them do come from my morning routines. And that to me is the hardest thing to do in a day. If I don't do it in the morning, it's not going to get done. And that's when I start, because I do track my business. I don't do it in a week or two weeks and it kind of prolongs to three or even a month. Um, that's where I saw, I started seeing numbers go down. Right. So as of lately, like very recently, um, I'll say like the last two quarters of the year, 
religiously. I have been following this regimen. I have been, you know, putting in my work and the numbers are showing. The results are definitely there. So it's something I'm definitely going to be implementing for all of 2024, which I know for a fact will give me way better results as of just, oh, one day here, one day there, one hour here, there. As long as I follow this religiously and I'm very strict with it, um, the results are definitely there. Or at least for the last two quarters that I have been actually implementing this regimen. Just, yeah. just note it, but guys. I'm open. So, I'm open to change. And so the the takeaway, Anna, because this you're by you sharing, you're helping everyone else listening right now. Just FYI, right? So the takeaway that I want you to get is when you set something up like this, now you're in control of the schedule, right? And there's so much power and freedom. Like, hey, I'm dictating how my business is going to go, versus like letting the day kind of take me wherever it's going to take me. Right. You don't want to do that. Now, let's say you wanted to keep your broker tour because that's important to you. Maybe on Tuesday. You're not doing the lead gen and follow up because you're out there doing the broker tour and then you're using that time to build connections and stuff like that. That's but on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday, you're doing lead gen and follow up and prospecting during that time. That also works. Right. So no one is going to hit this 100 percent. Right. But you could tailor it the way that works for you. All I'm trying to put in your mind is you have to create that consistent schedule that you follow your weeks. Every week should be about 90% the same, right? With a little bit of leeway here and there for other things that happen. I'm, I'm so glad you, you showed this on this structure is perfect because what I recently started doing, I, I usually get up at four 30 in the morning, mm -hmm. right? But I usually knock out all my emails, follow up all to from like five to like six, 7, 7 a.m. And then at 8 o'clock, I start doing calls all the way to about 11.30. And then I go door knock for about an hour and go drop off flyers. And then the rest of my evenings opened up. And that, that's perfect because that's the, it looks the same. So, yeah. There you go. Man. Yeah. I, awesome, I, guys. So let me run through the next thing. So a couple keys to success. Well, we're, we're coming to the end, guys. A um, couple keys of success. Number one is the only way that this is going to work, all of this plan that you came up with, is there needs to be some sort of accountability, right? Because we will get in our own way, myself included. If I don't have anybody to hold me accountable or something that I'm doing that, setting, that I'm setting up in my schedule that holds me accountable, whether it's a check-in, whether it's a commitment to someone, I know that I will slack off somewhere and I won't hit this as, as best as I can. You got to have discipline. You got to remember, if you want to have a great 2024, it's going to require you to push yourself and be more disciplined than maybe you were before, right? And discipline, guys, what I've realized, discipline equals freedom, right? If you are disciplined, now you have the choices and the options to go do the things you want to do because you put in the work and the sacrifice of being disciplined. Um, the other thing is you got to have check-ins, right? Because just like flying a plane you know, from one destination to the other, the pilots are always kind of checking in throughout the course to see if they're still on track. What's the wind like? What's the speed? What's the elevation? Am I hitting the targets? Are we, are we on track? Things like that. You got to have check-ins in your business, right? So on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, you need to spend some time to check in with your plan and see if you've been following it. Maybe what adjustments, some self-reflection. Hey, you know what? Yeah, I haven't really been doing my prospecting. That's why my numbers aren't there, right? So, you know, and check in with someone else, right? And then make adjustments if you need to. Sometimes we come out swinging, like really ambitious. And like, you know, it's it's hard to go from like, I'll give the gym example. There's people that say, I'm going to start going to the gym. They never went to the gym before. And then all of a sudden they're going to go to the gym seven days a week. That's really hard to do when you've never even went to the gym before, and then all of a sudden you're trying to say seven days a week, maybe you do it for a couple of weeks, but I tell you, you're not going to last, right? So make it easy on yourself, make those adjustments, go at a pace. I would rather you be giving it an 80 to 90% effort than trying to do 120% effort and you only last a week or two and then you burn out and you crash and burn, right? I want you coasting, 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 not just up and then down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? So if you've never prospected before, don't commit to seven days a week. Maybe commit to three days a week and then build off of that, right? 
And then the last thing, guys, is you're going to need ongoing coaching. You're going to need ongoing strategy, right? You're going to need ongoing support because there will be those times when you need that other voice, when you need someone to give you that kick in the ass or whatever it might be, someone to remind you of why you started or someone to ask you those questions that get you to remind remind yourself. So that's where you want to lean on people like myself, your colleagues. You want to lean on your other mentors, you know, YouTube videos, different things, right? Do things that are going to get your mind going so that you have that ongoing coaching and support. Um, and that's, those are going to be some of the keys to success, guys, as you build, you build all of these things into your life so that you hit these things. Uh, Q&A, guys, we're not really going to have time. We're kind of already over time. I know we're coming to an end. Now, the last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with is, number one is, I don't expect all of this for you to grasp everything in one, you know, one hour and 20 minute session. Um, because you may have some questions that are specific to you. You may have, you know, things like that. Um, so I'm open this, opening this out to everybody, guys. If you want to get in touch with me, go to meetenrique.com. Um, that's my, uh, my link to book a time on my calendar. And we could set some time and I'd be more than happy to spend some, you know, some time with you and kind of talk a little bit more about your business plan. Um, we are actively looking to partner with agents. We are actively looking to generate opportunities. Um, you know, but we also realize that people are, some people are happy at where they're at. That's not, that's not a problem either. But at the very, very least, what I want to happen is you leave this conversation here, or if you decide to have a conversation with me, you leave it better than you were right? You at least leave it with some nuggets, some value and point you in the right direction. And if there's anything I can help you with guys, let me know. If you see any opportunities for us, let me know as well. That's part of why I do this also. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you guys throughout the new year and, and cheering you guys on as well. <laughs>